Thanks, Nick. Well, neatly done. Thank you very much. Hello, yes, I'm David Baines. I'm the CEO of Fusion IP. Uh, effectively, in a nutshell, we've become the publicly listed commercialization arm of the university. We're actually the two universities we support. There's Sheffield University in Cardiff. Um, between them, they own about 55% of us, um, almost about the same amount each. Uh, and as, uh, for that reason, that's why I say we are effectively their publicly floated arm. And the reason we're publicly floated is it allows us to access relatively large sums of money. Not large sums of money compared to the billions that obviously the university is raising on the search, but still relatively large sums of money. We raised about 22 million so far uh, from uh, the AIM market to fund these early stage companies coming out of these two universities. And then we've raised about another 30 million quid from third parties for those companies once we're up and running. So um, we can make this work. We have a board, uh, we have a team. Uh, there's not too much more to say about that. Um, you'll see here Peter Grant, who's wandering around somewhere, and Stuart Gall, who surprisingly is also sitting there as the CEO of uh, Metaphor. And that's because actually quite often our team actually go into companies and become parts of that team. So he's now the full-time CEO there, and he'll take you through that company in a minute. Uh, but also uh, Dominic's here as well, if you want to meet another member of the team. So you have to be quick, because I think he's going away later in the morning. Um, so effectively, um, how does it work? Well, effectively, the universities do what they're very good at, and that's creating world-leading research and teaching, of course. Um, and they're also very good at identifying opportunities. In the case of Cardiff, I'm not being rude to Sheffield, but in case of Cardiff, Nick's team were extremely good at licensing. They, if you look at the league tables of licensing, come, they're, they're right up there. I think they're top three or top four. There's any Oxford and a couple of others are anywhere near them, really. And so they've done extremely well at licensing. Company formation is a tricky business and needs a whole load of certain skills that perhaps you wouldn't normally expect in a university. So that's the whole choosing which are the right companies, getting a company set up, recruiting management teams, venture capital funding, hopefully ultimately floating, etc. And that's really the bit where we come in. Um, we say there that we own 100% of the IP, tinge of an overclaim for anyone runs out and, and shouts at me. What it actually is, is we have the right to own shares in any company that's set up to commercialise university IP. So we don't today own all the university's IP, but it does mean we're allowed to say, we think that's a really interesting idea. We're going to set a company up. As we'll speak in a minute, we're going to share it with the academic. Please assign that IP into that company so we can try and commercialise it. And that's effectively what our agreement with the university is. It's not at all them and us, we're all one team. We have a Sheffield Fusion Board and a Cardiff Fusion Board and then the PLC Board. On the PLC Board, we have the Finance Director of Sheffield University and the Finance Director of Cardiff University. Quite often, Nick comes to those PLC Boards if, if um, Mike can't attend. And then at an individual in, in Cardiff, we have a Cardiff board where we as a team, Nick's on that, Wendy, a member of his uh, team, is on that. We all work together and decide, are we going to fund this? We're not going to fund this? Are we going to do that or not? So we very much work as a single team. As a result of this work, we've got about 20 companies now. I can never count this quick enough. It's something like 11, 9, isn't it? Sheffield, Cardiff, something like that. Maybe 8, 12. We've got 20 companies. We've had, to date, four exits. We actually floated the business in 2005. Something Nick said at the beginning of his presentation, or she told me at the beginning, and that's it. It does take a little bit longer than we thought. I have to admit, when we first went out and started saying to people we were going to do this, 2004 or five, we were saying three to five years from start up to exit. Mm. A bit optimistic. Reality, it's more like five to seven. The reason why Nick's number is even longer, they're talking from when you first get the research for the, the, the particular area. It might be seven or eight years doing research till you get to the case where you've got disclosure, and then you get a company. It does just take quite a long time building companies. That's the truth. No getting away from it. One rather busy slide, but the good news is this one slide actually is the whole presentation. This is all fusion is, really. What do we do? University's done the research. University has teams called what we call mining, identifying opportunities. That's Nick's RACD team. We interface with them, and they bring these disclosures, what we call a disclosure. Disclosure means something that's good enough to patent, exactly. things we're thinking about patenting, something we think that might have commercial opportunity. We sit with the team and we agree with them, ones that we like. They tend to fall into three categories. Careful what I say, not good ideas. Yeah, no, good ideas, but not good commercial opportunities. Maybe they've already published it in the public domain. Maybe the academic doesn't want to do it. Or it's a very, very small area. Sometimes you can spend an enormous amount of time on an incredibly exciting piece of technology. When you look at the market, it's only ever going to be about five million in total, for example, not per year, but ever. So you have to have a big enough market. 
The second kind of category we get is very interesting, but very early, particularly in life sciences. Brilliant. Wow, fantastic, but it's done in an agar plate, and it's the best 20 years from ever being in a human. So quite often on those, we say, that's really interesting. Do X, Y, and Z. Let's have a look at it again in three or four years, or two years, and see whether it's come on suitably to commercialise. And the last, much smaller category, the ones we think are worth commercialising. So the kind of criteria there, pretty straightforward stuff. Um, there's something disruptive about the technology. Some of you go, whoa, that, that's a real game changer. That is. It's an amazing breakthrough. Um, secondly, academic wants to be involved. Also very important at the beginning. Not necessarily to be like the CEO, but their science and their input is vital to, to the business going forward, obviously, if it's such sort of world-leading technology. You need um, a, a big enough market, as I've said. You need somewhere where there's a big market opportunity. Um, and you need something where you can see that there's a, a revenue model. You can see, well, actually, I can see how we get turnover out of that. If all those criteria are there, then we start thinking about setting up companies. And I would say we're getting about 95 disclosures a year from in Sheffield, and we're getting about 75 in Cardiff. Pretty much the same, really. Pretty similar split between life sciences and non-life sciences. Out of all that lot, we're probably only doing three or four companies a year. So there's quite a reduction in that. We actually, um, because it's not as good as Nick's team, we do do the licensing up in Sheffield as well. So in Sheffield, out of those 95, we probably license five, set up two. So here we're setting up probably two companies a year, something like that. It's that kind of ratio. And then and Nick's then got the five, ten that they're, they're doing a license opportunity with. Anyway, once we've got one we like, you, have, you got to the circle. We finally got to the beginning of that slide. You've got to the circle, and what we do is we start every company 60-40. Technically, Fusion has the rights to own all the IP, because, of course, the university owns its IP. But we always give 40% to the academic or academic team that set the company up. We try to keep that rule if we can. It's bent it a bit a couple of times, because you're starting creating trouble for yourself if you're going to start trying to negotiate every time, because that's all going to end in tears. So we tend to do 60-40, 